happy wednesday everybody thank you for coming on all things possible i'm gonna wait a few seconds and see who jumps on <clears throat> i want to say happy wednesday i think i already said that happy wednesday everybody it is the second week into october we've had a few shifts and retrogrades shifting and moon phases happening and people life shifting Today, I asked you guys to come and join me. I posted a fly. I have Dominic coming on today at 7.30. He is um, going to talk a little bit about what he does, where he is, what part of the world he's joining us in. You guys, thank you so much for joining me. All right, just bear with me a few moments. Okay, I see you already on, Dominic. So we, um, in a, if you see the little person with the frame, if you click on it, you'll be able to request to go on camera with me. If not, in a few moments, you'll pop up and I'll be able to request you. But for right now, we're just going to, until we get Dominic on, ground ourselves. Get ready to hear something in somebody's journey that will trigger something for you. Is the purpose we're doing this to talk about healing for the collective. Like you always hear me say, I believe that we are spiritual superheroes and our power, our passion, our love, our drive is our superpower. So whether that's healing, fixing something, serving others, however, in whatever form you find yourself doing that, that is your superpower. All right, so Dominic is already on with us. We're just going to wait a few moments so I can pull him on or he can request to come on camera. In the meantime, take a deep breath. Let it go. Ground yourself. Even if it's the first time for the day, or maybe this is your 15th time for today. Um, all right. I seen the request. Okay. Um, you know, ground yourself and just be open to hearing something maybe you've never heard before. All right, you guys, I don't have my drum roll still fixed. So we're going to do my little drum roll and welcome Dominic to All Things Possible. Thank you, everybody who is joining us. Thank you, thank you for coming in. Uh-oh, I said no answer. Okay, Dominic, it happens sometimes. Just try it again. If you see it pop up again, you can um, pop up and request. I can't request you yet because you are not showing up. Okay, hold on. I can't bring you on camera, why? <laughs> Come on, Facebook. All right. Yeah, I try to bring you on, Dominic, and it's saying I can't bring you on camera. Let me see if it says why. They're friends. I won't be able to watch this live unless... Okay. All right. It says it's adding. It's adding. Yay! Yeah. Oh. There we Bye. go. Hello, hello. Okay. Hello. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm really good. Thank you. It just Thanks. kicked me out the first time again. So now yes. I'm finally in. <laughs> I see it's bright daytime where you are right now. Yeah. It's nice time where I am. What part of the world are you in? Wow. I'm in New Zealand. I'm in Auckland, New Zealand. Um, still in lockdown here. Um, I'm, I have stopped counting the weeks of lockdown. Um, wow. But yeah, enjoying I the... I you guys are still in lockdown too. That's crazy. But your surrounding is beautiful. Yeah. I'm pretty lucky. I'm really blessed here yeah. to be with my partner Rani um, out of the city um, yeah. here in the Greek. And yeah, shiny uh, daytime and beautiful yeah. spring day. Yes, I can feel it. Hello, Vivian. Mm. Thanks for joining us. So go ahead and introduce yourself a little bit. Tell me a little bit about what you do. I know <clears> that you're a healer. My spirit gravitated towards mm. you. And so I asked you to come on and share a little bit about what you're doing. Yes, thank you for having me here today and thank you for letting me share my journey first. I yes. really appreciate that. Um, I wouldn't consider myself a healer per se, but I believe we are all healers and we are on our journey to discover our own healing. Yes. And for me, like the last, yeah, let's say five years have been deeply transformational. Um, I've been always on the journey, um, but I feel like the last five years were really fast tracking things for me. And yeah, you might hear it like I'm not, I'm not originally New Zealander. Like I come from Europe, from Germany originally. Okay. And I was growing up the usual 
Western society, um, yeah. German culture life, a lot of pressure, like with work, you know, like the, the, the real competitive culture we, we have created around us and always trying to be the best, trying to be the best yeah. husband, trying to be the best Christian at that time. So I, yeah. I was journeying with religion for a while, um, trying to be the perfect son, to be the perfect dot 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 right, you, everything, you fit yeah. in everything yeah. exactly and when i came to new zealand um um four years ago basically a lot of things in my life started to crumble um and it was like it was necessary it was a necessary crumbling of, of those things so, um i was holding i was holding on to so many things like my my christian faith was giving me security yeah. um as well, my marriage was giving me security and all those things, but they were, they had fundamental issues already at the time. There was a lot of doubt. Are we still doing the right thing? Um, like my ex-partner now and I were on different life paths and I'm so lucky with her. We went together to travel the world. So I left Germany maybe five, six, six years ago now. Yeah. Um, and we went traveling. We went traveling India, um, like Southeast Asia. We went to the US. Yeah. Um, we went onto the pilgrim's path uh, of the, the way of St. James in Europe for, for a couple of days as well. And this whole journey brought me to the point that I came to New Zealand four years ago um, and realized I can't do this anymore. I have to stop. Um, I, I have I have to rest. I have to stay where I am. I was just recognizing I'm running and running and running and I'm running yeah. away from myself, basically. Wow. Um, so yeah, um, funny story. Like I, I did all the right things, you know, society told me, yeah. like, follow your dreams, make everything work. Um, I, I got a job. <laughs> exactly. I got a job in game development, which I always thought like would be my passion. And I worked in the game industry for a couple of years, and it didn't fill me up, not at all. Like uh, I realized now, it's like I love working in the creative um, yeah. part of it, but then the whole money part of it, where you make it have a beautiful product and then you monetize it and you make it basically garbage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I was I was I was done with it. I was like saying that nah, it's not what I want to do yeah. anymore. Um, and so yeah, basically stopping here in New Zealand brought me to the point um that my ex partner and I we started talking again about where do we go next? And I said, nah, I can't mm -hmm. I cannot do it anymore. I cannot chase happiness and look for happiness somewhere out there. I can and possibly find it. I've been traveling to the end of the world and I couldn't find it here. Yeah. So where, where could it be? Um, and basically wow. one of the things that I started then is to go inwards and to actually listen to myself and to all those voices. And one of those voices was um, telling me for a long time through the traveling experience already that my faith, like my faith to God, to the universe, whatever you want to call it, that was real, um, mm -hmm. but the religion around it, it didn't fit me anymore. The box of religion didn't really fit me anymore. And I came to New Zealand, like as a Christian missionary, like as part of a Christian missional organization. Yeah. So I even tried to find happiness in purpose work. Um, and even there, yeah. it, didn't, it didn't give me what I was looking for. Do you, and so do you basically, remember? really quick do you mm -hmm. remember what was one of the first things as you started looking within yourself what was one of the first things that made you realize like oh wow there's more and wanted to go in that direction that did you know what yes. I mean? like it didn't you didn't stay in your religion base because there was something mm. that was like whoa god is so much bigger to me mm. and so and i knew this within myself all the forgiveness mm. rules and stuff that was laid around it seemed so boxed mm. up for God, and so that kept me pursuing. Was mm. it similar for you, or what? What happened to you that made you said this must be the right way? The the funny thing is, um, I I have one event that I would say was yeah. the most transformational event at that time, and people will probably laugh if they hear it. But it was my baptism. I decided um, like three and a half years ago in Taranga, in New Zealand, 
to get baptized. And okay. that baptism was a step for me into surrender, into saying, mm. God, I, I don't know it anymore. I can't do this life anymore. I've tried everything. I tried to please my partner. I tried to please my parents. I, you yeah. know, I've done everything and I give up. And basically that was the moment for me of a breakthrough surrender. moment. I still have this beautiful picture that was taken at that um, at that day and it is beautiful like I, I know now and I read the Bible it's often the baptism is de described as losing your old life and gaining a new one and I basically experienced it biblically but without yes. the religious part after it yes. I just breathed in that freedom and saying oh my fucking god I can't be myself <laughs> now <laughs> You know what else was a breaking point for me mm -hmm. when I got this message and God came out of this box? The breaking point for me where mm -hmm. I came to where I, oh shit, I don't care anymore what anybody else thinks mm -hmm. was when I realized, okay, so I also, I was brought up Hindu in religion, I mean Christian, okay, mm -hmm. in the religion part. My mom gave mm -hmm. us freedom to choose whichever. I chose the church yes. and I followed that for 17 years when I started coming out of it. So our our mission in there is to tell more people so that they can also get to heaven. Yes. When I realized I no longer had to tell anybody anything and they were all okay with wherever they were. When I realized yes. that I was okay and I didn't have to, I didn't have to help anybody. Everybody was perfect where they were. I was no yes. longer have this, like God needs my help kind of thing. The freedom yes. that came over me too. I was just like, Oh, I don't care. You know, like, I don't care respectfully <laughs> what you think about my religion or my beliefs yeah. or my, my system that I've set up or, and I respect yours. I got to the space where at first I was mad because they're forcing us to believe this and they, they lie to us. And then I realized, first of all, I used to ask source, who is they, who mm. is they? Cause you always hear, they said this, they said that they said, and mm. who was they? And I was doing dishes one day. And very gently, very firmly, I heard, they is you. And I was like, yes. oh, shit. Okay. So <laughs> I have to stop saying <laughs> that. Yes. And so I realized, you know, I can respect people at their point of belief. And mm. I didn't have to explain minds or convince anybody to believe what I believe. And that was so beautiful exactly. and freeing to me. Yes. Beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. Yes. And for me, like, this was the tipping point, I would say, in my life. And that was so beautiful because I then went on to the journey that you described, the journey of actually embracing who I am instead yeah. of trying to be something for someone else. Beautiful. The consequence, the first consequence is that my eight years marriage basically broke apart. Um, it was breaking apart before, um, but finally we were allowing it to break apart. Um, but this breaking apart triggered deep trauma in me. Mm -hmm. And I didn't even know, like my ex-partner and I, we broke up for the first time, maybe a couple of weeks um, after I like had this baptism experience. And I was for weeks um, not able to sleep and wasn't able to cope properly. And I had no idea why. Wow. Um, and so I got help through meditation, like counseling and things. They brought me back in a state I could function again. But then I went onto the journey, and I think you might have contacted me as well to talk about that a little bit, um, where a counselor was actually making me aware that the things that I and my partner were experiencing in the relationship has nothing to do with the here and now, um, but mm -hmm. goes way back to my childhood. Um, and yeah, basically I dived deeply into um, self-development work I started to become on, completely honest with my partner and my ex-partner as well. Um, so she felt guilty for making a breakup in, the, in, our, in our relationship. And then we still had contact later and I said, hey, you know, I messed up in this relationship as well. I was so scared um, of you leaving me that I, for example, never told her that I was watching porn for like all those years in this relationship because I was scared what yeah. she will think, what she will do. Yeah. Um, it was a coping strategy of mine, something where I, what I used to soothe myself when yeah. I felt fragile, when I felt insecure, when I felt vulnerable. Yeah. Um, and it helped, like this honesty in all those aspects brought us yeah. into the space to de do a little bit of healing work together. Um, but then we had to separate ways again. 
and I went deeply into so-called inner child work. Um, mm -hmm. where, yep, has always been. Uh, yes, yes, yeah, and that that was the biggest life transformation for me so far. Um, I went to a festival here in, in, in New Zealand, and I went to a, a workshop talking about inner child work. And I came late to the workshop. I was probably only there for the last 30 minutes or whatever. Um, but I took the last bit of a meditation journey with me. And on in this meditation journey, a childhood memory of me popped up into my mind. And I was just like, whoa, where does this come from? I didn't yeah. remember that for 32 yeah. years. Like, oh, wow. Yeah. And it, it was nothing big. Like, it was nothing traumatic or anything. Just a yeah. little of my childhood oh my goodness yeah <laughs> and i was just like oh my god if that is there somewhere in my unconscious mind how much more is there that i don't know about <laughs> exactly yeah. uh, and, this whole work every everyone i speak to no matter what aspect they're coming hmm. from once it it always comes back to spirit right it always comes back to self it always comes back to some type of healing yes. it's always something so I, I what i've discovered through my research and and before i even started doing interviews i was already researching and seeing that there's something that traumatic happens to us in our life with childhood and then the work of us growing up is to heal that mm -hmm. the funny thing is that even if you were born into the most perfect circumstances mm -hmm. you will still find trauma somehow yes. there would be trauma for that child to have to do it even if their parent we look and we think that's the ideal parent that child will still feel some type of trauma because it was meant to be that way because mm. this healing process that happened brings out this god aspect of us right yes, so yes. it's so powerful <laughs> now for us and like you said sometimes it's something little simple one of the things i've realized in doing childhood mm. healing and stuff like that is sometimes mm. our parents or the person the adult or even the other child who did this thing yes. to hurt us it was something we made up and it was our perspective of it it was not mm. really the reality of what was even happening and then there yeah. are cases where there it was but there are a lot of it it was our perception as a child that mm. we already took on and we looked at this this situation that happened and caused this whole story i lived uh, uh oh he'll be back on <laughs> but i lived this hurt for 40 years until i realized or maybe like 42 years <laughs> until i realized it all right it's adding this happens sometimes and i think it has to do with connection service um if one of us connection is low it will just disappear but they usually come right back on so dominic if you're watching stay close by <clears throat> i will bring you back on okay hold on i think here we go. Okay, I see that you're still here, so stay by. It'll come back on. I'm gonna send a request now and try to see if it'll go back. Okay, it says adding. But um, yeah, so a lot of our trauma that we're going through, even the feeling sometimes when we're feeling bad um, and can't figure out what it is, it could be something triggered from when we were little that we're still, and this time of that we're in, all of us, this time, space, and reality that we're in, is um we're healing not only ours but we're healing ancestral and for those to come so it's going to be pretty heavy there you go yeah, yeah we go. so it's gonna be pretty heavy and i noticed that i carried this trauma with me for 40 something years like mm -hmm. i was saying and and it was something that i made up in my head Mm -hmm. you know about and it, was, and it was something that was a perspective of a child and not even the reality of what what happened mm -hmm. and so there was a lot of healing that happened in that space too but yeah yes. yes yeah i hear you and i believe you know inner child work is is a modality like there's many of your modalities like yoga and things that can right. bring you to like a, a similar space yeah um, but for me when when i started looking into it and um, like you said before there might be memories and the memories are quite often not even that important but quite often what you have in childhood is you have like a an emotional state that is too big for you to yeah. process so your body stores that energy of whatever it is yeah. in your body and the trauma is not released yet and quite often we run through repetitive cycles in our lives and re-experience the same stuff again like you said oh. to bring 
to bring it back into our awareness so we can actually heal from it. Yeah. But quite often we are perceiving the situation exactly in the same way than we perceived it in childhood. Yeah. And that triggers the fight flight freeze response. And quite often we are acting and exactly in the same way again, mm -hmm. and we are not able to discharge that energy from our body. What do you think is one of the, the ways that we can start switching that? Like what was one of the things, like something came to mind yeah. for me was to stop blaming, um, stop beating up on ourselves. Cause I know a lot of people will have the tendency mm. to say, you know, why don't I deserve this? What am I doing wrong? Why is mm. this happening to me? This kind of yeah. mentality. And so to come out of that victim and blaming yourself or anybody else have been helpful to me. What do you think um, is a good way to shift that? So for, first of all, um, this is where inner child work has this concept about reparenting yourself. And that helped me, me a lot in my, mm -hmm. my journey. Um, so if I look at the end of my journey, I think I just wrapped it up quickly that we can talk about the modality a little bit more. Um, you know, I started with this little memory and what I did then, I was like, I was so curious what, what else is there in, in my memories. So I forced myself to stop and what I mean with that, I, I stopped coping. Like I, I stopped, I uninstalled Facebook from my phone, uh, all my games from my computer. I didn't watch porn. I didn't have sex. I didn't drink coffee. I didn't eat sugar. I, I didn't, I stopped everything that I was using as a coping strategy um, to not face my discomfort. You and it detox. opened up the, it, but it was a detox, not forced on myself to, um, be a better person, but to see what comes. And basically, it, I opened up the box of Pandora um, for myself. The box of Pandora of pain, of pain actually. Oh, um, wow. I was I was sitting for like month in pain, um, but that was the biggest part of my healing journey. And I became more and more aware, like when my ex partner, for example, yeah, for example, when she left the room. What I did unconsciously, automatically as a response is grabbing my phone and starting to want to scroll on my phone. But as I uninstalled everything I could scroll at, right. I was like, oh my God, what am I actually doing here? Yeah, yeah. The, this trained behavior of my mind, it's like, oh, discomfort. How can I distract myself from the discomfort? Mm -hmm. um, and so sitting with the pain um, was teaching me to parent myself and this is what inner child work um is about is developing self-compassion by seeing those wounded hurt parts of yourself um as the little child that needs to parent mm -hmm. um and you said before it's not about blaming the parents because our parents often have experienced the same trauma than we have um in their yeah. past yeah um but but what we are unconsciously doing is we are projecting our parents quite often on the people's people closest to us. So we might, as, as women, for example, or like gender doesn't play a role, but quite often as women, we, we see in our male partners, uh, we are projecting our father wounds on them. And as, as a man, for me, quite often with a female partner, I'm projecting my mother wounds on her. Yes, yes. So looking for the validation or the security or the nourishment because we haven't learned to give it to yeah. ourselves. So yeah, yes. inner child work and reparenting yourself is becoming, becoming your own father and your own mother. You know, having the duality of the masculine and the feminine inside of yourself and me as a man being able to nourish myself so I yeah. don't have to protect it on my partner that she has to be the nourishment in my life. So powerful. Yes, it is. It is about fight. I feel like, um, like I was telling, I have a lady who uh, helps other women coach and, you know, prepare for relationships and stuff. And one of the things that I realized was they said, if you see something that you want, find someone who is doing it and study them or study, you know, mm. and so one of the things I want is a healthy, beautiful relationship. So I looked at healthy relationships. And one of the things that so many things I noticed that we don't do normally, that is something you cultivate or work on. One of the things is to be filled with yourself, that you have love yes. for yourself. Because I've seen how that reflects in your trust issues with your partner, how people trust yes. each other differently when they love themselves separately. And then 
the other person is adding to them mm -hmm. you can actually see that you know when you when i've studied it so i think yes, that is yes. a really very healthy thing that we are becoming more aware of now too so people are knowing not to look to you for to make me whole or i need you with these love songs that they have that i need mm -hmm. you and i'll die without you but to be in love with yourself and so that the two help and and you know help each other and love each other even in a different way than we're uh more um what is it uh, ego where this is mine you are mine i am yours yeah. you know this kind of way is so different now but exactly so i'm i'm gonna start wrapping up a little bit i want to ask yes. do you work with other people too do you help and i know you help other people and i thought i see you in like a men's group or something is that correct yes like i have different offerings um I am still working in the main industry in the world out there. I'm still a game developer. I'm Me doing too. educational games. Yeah. Um, I work with but I'm doing, <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing as well well-being now in the corporate world, which is really nice. beautiful as well. The doors are opening more and more up for this work. Um, and I'm offering like inner child work, um, like introduction workshops. Oh, um, that's beautiful. For me, like this is the end of my journey. I just want to bring that in like i i separated from my ex-partner and i separated from her by being like clingy and attached to her for over eight years i separated yeah. from her with her in a way by telling her hey actually if you are not happy in this relationship and if you don't want to do this anymore you know you're free you're free to leave and that was my biggest step for me being anxiously attached for over eight years I was feeling secure and safe in myself that I could yeah. finally let her go. And that wow. is for me, the biggest um, part of love. Love is not, I love you. You need to stay with me. No, I love you. Whatever is the best for you, you go for it. For um, yes. And yeah, like a couple of weeks later, I still had a panic attack, but there I was <laughs> sitting with my little boy. And I was sitting by myself without parents, without partner, without friends, just being with my little boy. And then yeah. I started running those inner child workshops. And I've been running them now for three and a half years. I'm still wow. working with my own inner child. <laughs> yes. And my inner yeah. child shows up in my own relationship with my partner now. And I believe the biggest lesson is how can you love yourself when you're not loving yourself? This is the biggest lesson to learn. Because those moments will come back, you know, you can be full of self-love and you can fall out of it. But how you treat yourself in the moments when you're not in love with, with, with yourself, those are the parenting skills you can learn. And you will parent the, not only yourself, you will parent your partner, you will parent the world, you will parent everyone oh. around yourself. How you de treat that. yourself in your weakest moments, this is what you bring into the world as well. Wow, that's so powerful. Okay, before we go really quick, I have to ask, what is one tip that you can treat yourself better if you're in this space where you're not, you're out of love with yourself, but what is one thing that you can do to treat yourself better? Because mm. I know there must be a list, there's many, but what is one thing that yes. you can think of at the top of your head? I have a little exercise you can do without much effort, um, maybe weekly. Okay. And I just say it's a self check-in. Um, and you can just do it maybe now if, if you all want to do it just maybe two three yes. minutes let's do it so just just put a hand on your heart and maybe one on your belly and take a deep inhale and an exhale and become present with everything that's happening in your body and your mind and your emotions and now i invite you to to think about something that happened last week or maybe take longer if nothing comes to your mind were you really proud of yourself? Like what, where you really achieved something um, that you showed off skills or whatever, where you really felt good in yourself. And now just witness what's coming up. <clears throat> Is there any doubt coming up? Is there any judgment coming up? Just witness all the voices that are coming up in your head right now. And if those voices are coming up, what are you doing with them? Are you trying to push them away? Are you trying to make it different? Are you trying to silence those voices? 
And I want to encourage you to just talk to those voices like a little child and saying, hey, I hear you. You might doubt that this is really good, but you know, we're doing our best. We're doing our best. And now maybe just shake it off for a moment. And I want to guide you into another thought, another minute. Okay. Now, now think about something where you might have messed up in the last week, where you didn't know it better, where you made a mistake or something. How are you treating yourself in this moment? What voices are coming up? What emotions, what feelings? And just sit with it and just witness it and observe it for a moment. And if there's negative self-talk, just accept it and talk to your little child. How would you parent yourself right now? How can you meet your own needs right now? All right. And let's shake that off as well. <sighs> so this is a thing you can do every week um, wow. just to see where Please. are you with your son. Please you comment know, from... in the comments if that touched <laughs> you. That was so powerful. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Blue players. <laughs> that was beautiful. Yeah. That is a beautiful way. So I can imagine you guys, if you want to know more, you need to click on his name up on the top up here. Um, we're going to yes. put your website in the comments too. So people know yes. how to reach out to you. There's probably so much more, I want to say hundreds more of ways <laughs> too that you can do that and tap into. And so I want to thank you so much for coming and sharing yeah. your love, your energy with us. Mm -hmm. I want people to me. find you more so that we can heal from little children. I think we walk around little healed children on this earth. We'll live in a better space on earth, right? Not definitely, from the egotistic definitely. place. So. Thank you so yeah. much for coming on, Dominic. Thank I you appreciate so much for you. having me. Yes. All Love right. Being here. Have a Thank beautiful you. day. And Thank anytime you. you have anything else that you want to promote, I want to leave my platform open to you. And if you feel inspired to share your post yes. in the group, I would love for you to, okay? Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a beautiful right. day. You enjoy the rest of your day. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. All right, you guys, thank you so much for joining me. Don't go far. I'm coming right back on in like less than five minutes with Andrea. That was powerful. That moved and shifted. I mean, whew, that was, I hope it did for you too. If it did, leave a comment. Like I said, I'm going to leave his link in there too so you can learn more from him. Just watching his posts, like I said, um, it has been beautiful. And so thank you for spending this beautiful time with me. I'll be right back with Andrea.